They clear, but Webster keeps it in there. A bump against uh, number 21, Shadlow. Now finally, Lebedev with it against Henderson. He can't work a three. The Canadians now putting some pressure on the Soviets in their zone. Golfed out to center ice for Lebedev. He lost it there to Schmier and now to Henderson. For Walt. Walt side up. Jedrick comes away on the left side now with Lebedev. Rick Smith contained him. Walt comes up with it. Gets the puck to Webster. He shoots it across the ice and down. And Dean Kennedy is called for icing. He's 3.40 remaining. You know, on that goal, the second goal of Soviet Fury, he was had just recovered his goal stick after the big pileup of the previous play. He had to retreat from the mesh now. He was just getting nice and settled. The puck came loose on the left side. They popped it in. Well, in this type of game, you can't take a hooking or an interfering or a silly tripping test. They're the ones that kill you. Players were cautious against that by Billy Harris. Again, she had a couple of Vancouver, now here the one in this game today. And uh, you'll be giving a second thoughts, I'm sure, as we go the rest of the way with 3.25 to play. And the Soviet zone, the USSR bringing it out. Here's the fast for Vicolo. Vicolo is tied up by Ricky Lee. Now Bobby Howe has it. Howe with McKenzie and McLaughlin. Three on two inside the line for Johnny McKenzie. McKenzie drifted in front. Fred Jack. Has it with a glove hand. Three oh seven left now. A two one game with the Soviet lead. All set is both their goals. Gordy Howe for Canada. Early in the second period with the only Canadian score so far. And again, he wants to see it over and ask the referee to suck you something. Becky from Poland speaks uh, quite good English. Now he settles into the face off and shift back. Picks up the Soviet Union at center right. Drops the line to Piccolo, but that's the ruled offside. He breaks so quickly that it's uh, difficult to get the timing going with the great burst of skating speed they show. He's had offsides of that nature at both ends. I think you need to keep an eye on number 11, Lebedev gone in on Rick Smith two or three times tonight. He hits into the outside, puts the puck behind him, and then tries to take the puck back up again. He's made this three great shifts, and uh, Rick Smith hasn't gone for any of them. But sooner or later, he's going to put that puck between his legs. That's Stapleton with J.C. Plantley on the ice now. They play it ahead for Lacroix. To McKenzie on the right side. McKenzie across the Soviet line. Turned around. Lost it finally. And the Russians come back with the highlight on the left side against J.C. Plantley. He turned it back. Now Bobby Hull comes up with it. About 2.40 remaining in this second period. 2-1 to the to Soviet lead. Lacroix coming up there. A long opportunity of center right to miss. The highlight on the front the blue line. Gets it back on the far side behind Gusev. Gusev to Mihailov. Mihailov for cuts off. And it's broken up by Matt Stable. And now they break out of there. Lacroix ahead to Bobby Hollow. Tipped away by Gusev. Hull chasing it down beside the Soviet head against two defenders. Off the boards. They get it out again very promptly inside Canada's line. Stapleton ahead for Bobby Hull. And it's played right back down beside Gary Peters. Here's Hull to Bernier. Now Rajan Hull is changing on the go. Back for Bernier. He's shot. Blocked by Fredjak. And the rebound. He couldn't get out to Hull. Hull into the left corner now. Bumped there by Vasilia. We'll try to tie it up. Bernier works it free. Up the board. Bernier has it to Stapleton now. Stapleton getting set. Getting around the gang. Got the back end in front. Rebound. And oh. Off the speed of Bernier and finally clear. Minutes and a half left in period two. Petrov in across the line. Right in front of the goal for Harlemov. Mihailov still loose. And Sable has finally cleared off of the boards. Harlemov back to Vasilia. Vasilia, the deflection was wide by Mihailov. Rejan Hul fails to clear. Over for Mihailov against Bernier. To Harlemov right in front as Jesus goes on it. To hang on as Mihailovich promptly clears number 16, Petrov out of the way. Now the Soviet player takes his swipe at Bernier. Harlamov 
actually uh, throw a punch at Curry Bergay or what might pass for one under international hockey rules or hockey contest. And they'll each get roughing penalties. Bernier for Canada and Harlan off for the Soviet Union. The last two or, two or three shifts, Team Canada has been going to the puck. If there's a real good chance there, the pass went from Bernier to Hull and hit Hull's gate and almost in the net. Trichek was in the right place at the right time. But again, Team Canada in our own end are starting to fish for the puck instead of take the man. And we're giving the rush of that second and third opportunity and eventually it's got to hurt them. There is well off on these at a tough night with that uh, shot. Into a lot of the physical action in this game, bouncing around the ice. Ian Bernier getting uh, centers up a little bit, so they go off at 18.52 roughing. So with a minute and eight seconds to play in the second period, the Soviets leading by a two-to-one score, the face-off in the Canadian zone. It'll be Shadrin on the draw against Frank Mahovlich. Matt Staple is back talking with the referee Zepecki there at the top of your picture, delaying things for a moment. You recall the last time the team played here, there was not glass around the back of the uh, net. Of course, they have that in now, the plexiglass, instead of the old netting, which is customary for years here at Moscow. Now Mahavlitz on the faceoff, Lebedev comes up with it. Back to Sagankov, now Lebedev again. Gets it into Shadray and loose pocket. Evers bounces right there to hang on. We have now just a minute to play in the second period. Jerry Cheevers, what a super job he has done in this game tonight for Team Canada 74. And throughout the series for that matter. Face-off game as Canadians were changing, sending Backstrom and Howe out there, so they'll repeat it. Trombley and Staple have remained. The Soviet forces remains unchanged. Playing five aside, back to him on the face up. Shadrin looking for it from Lebedev. Shadrin back to Sagankov. His shot was wide as Jeevers was screened on the play. Gordy Howe waiting, getting it around to Pat Stapleton. Out of Backstrom. Stapleton. Did not make a play, gets a second chance, and gives it to Ralph Backstrom. Both playing cautiously. Five aside, a minute and 20 seconds. Now, 30 seconds it is. 30 seconds remaining in the period. The penalties have the longer time to go. Here's Levy there. Oop, Baxter's got a piece up, but he carries on, and now Stapleton finally makes the check. Matt Stapleton. Fire for Gordy Howe is called offside of the Soviet blue line now with just 11 seconds to play. Backstrom, Lebedev takes it. Neither team willing to make a move, just instead of killing off the time here, settling for a one-goal differential as they get ready for the third period. Now the Soviets come up the ice, and there's the siren to end the 40-minute mark of this hockey game, with the Soviet Union getting a second goal from Monsev at 15.04 in the power play, while McKenzie has taken a hooking penalty for Canada. To send them in front. Gordy Howe has tied it up from back to the Mark Howe at the 15 second mark after Molstead's initial goal back in the first period at 5.34. So the Soviet Union, a goal up now. And with the score, the Soviets to Canada 1. This is game five from Moscow. Announcing the amazing new Patty Stacker, a fantastic kitchen convenience from KTEL. The Patty Stacker makes and stacks up to a dozen hamburger patties quickly and easily. Simply put one of the reusable plastic discs in the tube. Now, put your fresh ground beef on the disc. Drop in another disc. Then, using the plunger, press the meat into a uniform patty. Imagine, no more mess, no more fuss. Your hands need never touch the meat. Repeat this until the tube is filled. By simply reversing the tube, the patties can be easily removed. Now they are ready to be cooked, placed in the refrigerator or in the freezer. Perfect for unexpected guests or quick snacks. For a picnic or cookout, leave them right in the tube. Patty Stacker is an amazing kitchen tool. It's convenient, easy to clean, and effective. Get the all-new Patty Stacker, $4.99 from KTEL. Available at Eaton's in Manitoba, Saskatchewan, and Alberta, and the Bay, Woodward's, and Simpson Sears. 
and at Woolco, Woolworths, Zellers, McLeod Stores, and Link Hardware. You know, we've taken a lot of time in the recent games this year and then two years ago and finding the various ways, the, the strategical ways in which the Russians have learned to play hockey, the way they learn to do things, the way they warm up on the ice, the way the goalkeeper Trechak does certain things. Well, Howie Meeker has been keeping an eye on him. We put together this little story, and I'm sure you'll find it interesting. The experts that the Russian goaltending would not stand up. Since then, Vladislav Trechak, the gentleman you are watching warm up, has proven that he belongs with the Dryden, Destinito, and Ferrand. Trechik is not the exception. In fact, in league competition in Moscow, he's rated as ordinary. The Soviet system has produced many fine goaltenders, and like everything else they do in sport, the Russians have developed special warm-up and training features for every position. Just look at the stretching exercises, and look at how he shifts his weight from knee to knee and still maintains his upper balance. Just unbelievable what this fella can do. Now, in his warm-up routine, Everything that can happen in a game situation, from a deflected shot to a screen shot, is practice. Number 13, Boris Mikhailov, an exceptionally good hockey player. Now look at, first of all, on the glove side, on the ice on the glove side. Look at the routine. It goes from stretch X, look at, to the second goaltender, every rebound goes right to the, to the goaltender who gives it to Mikhailov. Here he is, look, when he goes down in the ice, look how low he keeps the stick on the ice. Now, here's a shot from well out. This gentleman has exceptional balance. This is where they practice the screen shots from all different angles. The goaltender in a Russian warm-up work for the full 15 minutes. Now, in the one-on-one -on -one situation, it's an offensive practice. The defenseman only skates backwards and tries to turn. They do not take the move. Hey, watch this move. Look at this. How are you? Is that something? You see him do that in competition. Now, here's the second goaltender. He's in the corner warming up as well. Now the Russians go to a two-on-one situation. And again, it's practice the goaltender and practice open. The, the defenseman is just in there to get in the middle of the play and make them pass it around him. Pretty good passing play. And there's the move that Trecek wouldn't make in the game. If he would, it would cost him. This is now a three-on-one situation, and they never stop, never stop working on the goaltender. Watch this move on McKenzie that he makes. Look how he stays on his feet. Look at this. That's on Hool. And how quick he gets up. He's very, very mobile in the net. Again, though, the stick on the ice all the time. Look at the move. There's Frank with the puck. And the Russians go down the other end. Here comes Hayes. They can hold pretty well, too, can't they? Now, here's where he moves out on McKenzie shot. Look at this. Read the situation. See how far he was out? Now watch this top left-hand corner. You leave just a little too much for that big Gordy Howe and he puts it in. Well, our goaltenders, as good as they are, can improve their game performances if we warm them up properly. And oh yes, we can learn something from watching the Russians perform. That's the story of uh, how Trechak became the great goaltender that he is. And I think it's just one more dimension that the Russians have put into the preparation because that doesn't happen. Hundred years that happened all in the last 25 years. So there are many things you can learn there, particularly you minor league coaches who might have been taking notes of some of the things Howie was pointing out. One of the things we've always wanted, of course, was to meet the Summit Series. And the other thing we wanted to do was to not only get back in international hockey, but get back into international hockey at the Olympic level. Now, Lou Lefebvre, the director of Sport Canada, is here with us, and the question that we have, Lou, is. Uh, are we going to? Will we? Can we? How do we go about it? And all the rest of it, the whole country would love to know. Well, I think, John, let me start off by saying yes, we want to. Yes, I think we will. And I think it will be in 1976. Uh, I think that um, the situation is right, uh, given the European uh, position we have Canada at the present time, given, I think, the International Ice Hockey Federation's willingness to have us back in. 
the, the question that remains is how do we put an Olympic team together, uh, to put together that can, you know, uh, defend Canada with some honor or yeah. represent Canada with some honor, and at the same time meet the very strict eligibility rules uh, for amateur. Uh, we're convinced that it can be done and that it will happen as early as 1976. Well, if it happens in 76, does that mean now that somebody's going to have to drop out of the B pool for you to automatically qualify, or yeah. how else are you going to make I, I think um, there'd be no question about going into 1975 in order to qualify for 76. Yeah. That's already set for Sapporo, as you know, and, and uh, we have no plans of sending a team to Sapporo. It means that someone, Switzerland or, or whoever, would pull out in 1976 in favor of Canada, and we would take whatever place they have in the draw and uh, play it from there. And have you any idea what kind of a team we would have? Would we have would it be a strictly amateur? Is, it, is that why these college coaches are here or what? Of course, it has to be a strictly amateur team, which really means the nucleus probably has to be uh, the, the student national team, strengthened perhaps with whatever available juniors we have or whatever available seniors we have who could meet the eligibility criteria. I think that junior team they had out in Western Canada that played against the Team Canada 74 in that exhibition series right. had a couple of players because they would have lost the players that turned pro, Turn pro and they would do well for you. Yes, I think um, if, if you can break up the junior, the major junior A uh, schedule, as you know, this will happen in February of next year and that comes right smack in the middle of the of the schedule. So there are an awful lot of mechanics to be worked out. I think the CHA have to sit down and, uh, and decide how they're going to approach it, as well as the CIU in order to get the students available. I think, it, I think it has to be a mixed team. But it is going to happen. Canada is going to be in the world, uh, the Olympic hockey tournament in 1976. Johnny, you've been around international hockey and Buddy Hearn as long as I have. <laughs> Nothing could be that definite that no one is going to come out and say, yes, we will be there. Let's say that everybody is working positively towards ensuring that it will happen. But I think the, that's as definite as we get. But the prospects are there. The prospects are excellent. All right. Lou, you know, somebody, uh, and I was speaking to uh, Anatoly Tarasov here just yesterday. I've never seen him look so good. And, you know, uh, I, I was delighted that he made it to the Hall of Fame. And uh, we took some film of him. Uh, he, he wasn't there, of course, but the reception. Freddie Shiro paid a great tribute to uh, Anatoly Tarasov uh, 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 as, as he made the Hall of Fame. And we'd now like to uh, go and, and, and have you see that story. Great job. This is indeed a pleasure for me to be standing here today honoring a great man, Anatol Tarasov. Some 30 years ago, the road to the Soviet national team was in its first stages. Something like a road in the forest. The distance seems not too long but it's quite easy to lose one's way. Lucky for Russia, and lucky for the world, a great leader emerged to lead the way. That leader was Anatol Tarasov. He was a great hockey player. He also played in the first international competition, and his coaching record is unique. It'll probably never be duplicated. His teams were known for their precise and determined play and their adherence to the academic style. In 1967, that's when I became a disciple of Tarasov when I read his book, Road to Olympus. And I consider it the greatest book ever written on hockey. I must have read it a thousand times, and every time I read it, I learn something more. And I think Anatol Tarasov was very much instrumental in helping the Philadelphia Flyers win the Stanley Cup. Mr. Tarasov is not here tonight, but he has a representative. And I'd like to call upon Stanislav Ignatov to say a few words on Mr. Tarasov's behalf. Thank you very much. and great pleasure to stay here together with you 
and to receive on behalf of Colonel Anatoly Tarasov with the high signs of his membership of uh, the Hockey Hall of Fame. And um, we're a little short there, Howie, so you're going to have to hurry up here a little bit. We have the, the Gordy Howe goal as the highlight of that period. It, it bounced the Canadians back. It seemed to give them the lift of life they needed. They just couldn't seem to hold on at the end. They gave it away once too often and boom, two one. Well, the Russians have been checking extremely well, both by playing their position, by with the stick, and also finishing the check with the body. They're, I think, checking as good as any Russian team I've ever seen. And if they do that, it's going to be tough to beat. However, uh, Team Canada has had one or two good scoring opportunities, and I kind of think we're lucky to be within one goal at this point in time, and 20 minutes of hockey can, can get us. Here the puck goes into the corner, and you'll see Canada come up with the puck. Poole has been playing extremely well. It's over to Howe, and Howe puts it in. And it's not too often you're going to stop Gordy. He took it on his forehand, just standing behind the net, brought it around in front. Here you'll see the pass go in behind the net. And he brings it so quick, so quick from his forehand to his backhand. That Trecek never did make the move. And that's Mark Howe who creates the loose box. He gets it to Baxter. And he just guns it to Gordy. So you'll see Gordy stick the stick behind. Now look at how quick he comes across. He loses the stick, tucks it in. The thing that's been missing is that kind of a, a three-way passing play. Our players have not been doing that. I don't know whether it's because they simply haven't had enough time to do it, like a familiarity, uh, but that's kind of a goal there we've seen all too infrequently throughout the series, and particularly that kind of play tonight. Normally, when we hit like this, we control the corners. We're not controlling the corners, the Russians are. They're taking the check and either beating us to the puck or sending someone in out, someone else in to be beat us to the puck. He's had the puck, I'd say, 80% of the time. We're either chasing the puck or chasing the player with the puck all night long. Uh, if we can come out and get it into their end and get two fellas in as quick as we possibly can and put a little pressure on them, I think we might get something. But getting going. those two in there seems to me to be an over-anxiety because not one or the other is going offside. We're, 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 we're taking very many offside. Well, we're coming out of our end ahead of the puck. This is one thing you can't do in international hockey, Johnny. You can't come out of that blue line ahead of the puck, and we're doing it. And the Russians are blocking the wings. So the, the wingers you know, are locked out of taking the pass. They keep on skating, and or we throw it to them hoping. Okay, Howie, and that's the uh, second period. The score is the Soviet 2, Canada 1. This is game 5 for Moscow. Canada is an energy-rich country, but we consume over 45,000 gallons of oil every minute, over two and a half million gallons every hour. That's more than 63 million gallons every single day. But Canada's available oil resources won't last forever. If we continue using oil at this rate without finding new sources, we'll run out. We have to find more. Last year, Gulf Canada spent over $57 million finding and developing new energy resources. And this year, we'll spend more than $110 million. Gulf is confident that the petroleum reserves are there, enough to meet our needs for generations to come. To find them, it takes time and money. Gulf is working to stop a future supply shortage by spending that time and money now. Well, this is a series for sports fans, and we got a combination of sports fans here with us from somewhere in Canada. Where about you folks from? From Vancouver. And your name? Ivan Kramer from Vancouver, North Vancouver. <laughs> Did you buy that here? I treated that uh, for a Canadian flag. My name is Fred Chatham, and I'm from <laughs> Jim Clark, I'm from Calgary. Kaparuski, good time. <laughs> Ken Ronalds in Vancouver. <laughs> Hard to get these hats here. Where, listen, uh, where, 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 you, where you people been seated? Over the far end with 3,000 people. Is that right? Oh, so you had to come all the way. All the way over here. Was it we tough? Fought, we fought the entire Russian army getting here. <laughs> How do you like the game so far? It's a little early to tell. Uh, great game. We've got to check a little tougher. Fun. A little tougher. Vancouver. Great, great group of fans. Terrific. Yeah. A lot of fun, though. And Russia, great hospitality. 
the heavy you felt them. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, but uh, the Russians, <laughs> the Russians uh, are even better. Great, All right. Great hospitality. Great. Right, nice to have you with us. Have a good time. And now let's go back out there onto the ice as we go upstairs with Don Chevrier and Howie Maker. All right, Johnny and I, for the life of me, don't know why those fans are wearing suits and jackets. It's uh, 75 degrees here in Moscow. And a little warm in the drink tonight, too. Billy Harris now is the team a goal down with 20 minutes in which to make it up here at the Smithy Stadium in Moscow as the USSR leads by a score of 2 to 1. Maltsev has both their goals. Gordy Howe has Team Canada's goal. And the shots on goal reflect the tremendous edge in play the Soviets have enjoyed in this game. 19 to 8 is the total after two periods in favor of the USSR. In fact, it had not been for the outstanding, and I really mean outstanding work of Jerry Cheevers. Well, the Canadians might well be out of this game at this stage. Brett Jack at the other end, who is so superb in Canada, has not had a great deal to do, but has handled the two or three real dangerous scoring opportunities, save the house shot that has confronted him tonight. And now here's Maltsev as we begin third period play, as they are a man short from the penalties near the end of the second period. The double penalties are 40 seconds remaining, and those are race for Cheevers wins for Maltsev. Plus, it open net, shot it wide! Cheevers was 30 feet out of the goal. And finally, it's cleared back to center ice and down to the Soviet blue line. Luchinko. Up to Maltsev. He has been outstanding. He and Hul collide. Hul sweeps in for the puck, drives it down to the right corner. Vikulov in there against Mahavlitz. Passes right in front to Sagankov. Now about 10 seconds to go in those double penalties. At the blue line, Hul goes for a tumble against Maltsev. Staple and digs it around the boards for J.C. Tremblay. And now Tremblay starts up. For Hool, too far. The penalized players are back on the ice. Harlem Olven, Bernie, the team's at full strength. Hool centering it out. Nobody there. The Soviets stick it up. Victolo sends Harlem off away with Maltsev, two on one. Over to Maltsev. Oh, and he went too far. As Stapleton goes sliding into the end board. Tremblay works it down the ice. Finally, it slides with... Hulu chasing it into the Soviet zone, and they're now going to make a player change in the second minute of this third period. Don, you make a fundamental error anywhere in the ring, and the Russians take advantage of it. It's just amazing the way these people turn a disadvantage into a here's Look at that. just under his stick. A little off the heel of his stick, goes under his stick, and Chevers is down trying to make the save. Back live now around that Canadian goal. Here's Mikhailov getting a chance. On the board, Howe is pumped. Schmier comes in to help him out, takes over with the puck. Howe is holding Harlemov's stick and didn't let it go for about five seconds. Now in center right, number 13, Boris Mikhailov. Up to the early Harlemov. Harlemov across the blue line. Sweeping in is Mikhailov for the pass. Now here's Gustav all over his stick. Too far from Petrov, Mihailov dumps it in front, and Schmier picks it up. The Soviets just a step behind, some great scoring formations in front of that Canadian goal. Pass for Howe, batted down by the stick of Yusev, it is offside, and they'll face off just in front of the Soviet blue line. The Russians are pulling quite a cute trick. Team Canada are picking up their wings and going in deep with them. And when the puck goes into our end very, very deep, then that leaves the spot open on the blue line, and they're sneaking Tusev, and they're sneaking Luchenko in time and time again, looking for that pass into the open area. What you saw a moment ago, too, where you were talking, how he was restoring so many of the games so far in Russia. Now, the play is the center ice area for Rick Smith, who's on there with Schmier. They play it across inside the blue line. Swinging around is Howe. Markov is tied up, but the Soviet defender, Sagankov, he gets it up to Bodanov. Across the center ice for Lebedev against Schmier. Jagrin tweeting in there, but it's cleared out to center. Backstrom goes bumping into the boards there against Chantelo. Now across the Soviet line, they cannot get it to Gordy Howe. He has to go back. Howe up to Lacroix. Lacroix to Howe. Howe inside the blue line. Over to Chagrin as the Soviets break it up and vote it off with Lebedev, and that is whistled down. There's going to be a penalty, I believe. to Andre Lacroix, who is protesting quite vehemently to the referee, to Pecky, but Lacroix is going off. With the score of the Soviets 2 and Canada 1, this is Game 5 for Moscow. It's new this year, the Canadian division of the WHA. Yes, the Quebec Nordiques, Toronto Toros, Winnipeg Jets, Edmonton Oilers, 
and Vancouver Blazers will provide a new dimension to Canada's traditional rivalries. You'll watch superstars like Gordy Howe, Frank Mahovlich and Paul Henderson, Rejan Houle, Johnny McKenzie and Bobby Hull. For season tickets, call your local team office. It's going to be a great hockey year in the WHA. Make sure that you're a part of it. Andre Lacroix goes off for slashing at the 2.46 mark of this final period. The Soviet power play is on the ice once again for the fifth time in this game. And they have one goal out of it. Their second goal by Maltsev on the power play. They lead it 2-1. Zagankov now has the pass broken up by the big end. Frank Mahavlet who swings away from him. Back into his own goal. J.C. Tromblay to pass Stapleton. Now ahead from Mahavlet. He bats it inside the Soviet blue line. Luchenko takes over. Up to Maltsev. Undoubtedly the Soviet star of this game. Maltsev across the blue line. Dropping it back on the right point. Here's the game card. Tulichenko winding up for the shot. Rebound. Great save by Cheevers. Poole in behind his goal. Into the corner. Golfs it down the ice. With a minute and ten seconds now remaining in the penalty. Tulichois for slashing. Seventh Canadian penalty of this game. Here's Siculo against disabled it, but turned away, and they win some more time by shooting it back down the length of this for the fourth stadium, high service. The Gankov, back from almost stole the puck from him, slowed him up, but he gets the long pass too far for Viculo. Now Sabin lost the sideboard, down behind the Soviet goal again, with 40 seconds to go in Andre Lacroix's penalty. Harlamov now starting out, number 17, with Petrov and Mihailov, inside the line. For Mihailov, the pass behind it. Harlamov gets it back to Gusev at the point. Gusev is a slot in front of Petrov. Oh, and he shot wide and high. As he might have had Cheevers beaten on that play as Cheevers made a move to his left. At center ice, back to the coast for a tumble there. The Canadian fans out of rage. No penalty has been called. Here's Gusev carrying on. The shot is caught by Jerry Cheevers. who will stop it with nine seconds left of the cause penalty. But the entire Canadian delegation, the players, the coach Billy Harris, and 2,500 fans left to their feet. And now a misconduct has gone out to Ralph Baxter. The referee did not call the penalty, but it's called the misconduct for Baxter for arguing about it. The Russian taken dead aim, and Keevers coming out as he should have. The Russian had no alternative but to shoot the bucket. Keevers again played a great. The man has just been sensational. A 10-minute misconduct to Ralph Baxter comes at the 4.37 mark of this third period. And he was protesting what appeared to be an outrageously flagrant Soviet tripping penalty. 10-minute misconduct penalty. That type of play has been going on practically all night, and in the main, the referee hasn't called it. I think he's been as fair for one side as the other. Uh, Lacrosse in the penalty box over there because he didn't flash, he speared the Russian, and he happened to be standing right in front of the official when well, he did it. The, the Canada field should have been called because I guess they got a better view of it right in front of their bench. Yeah, well, there's no that. doubt under normal circumstances it has to be a penalty, but he's let that type of thing go most of the evening. All right, now with uh, nine seconds left in Lacroix's sentence and Backstrom off for ten minutes, which is the majority of the balance of this hockey game. Here's the face-off. Bouncing loose in front. Golf to center ice. Gusev with it now for the USSR. To Harlemov. As the quad steps back, the team are at full strength once again. Harlemov was read by Sableton as he crossed the blue line. Slowed him up. Here's Henderson now with Walsh. Henderson winding up. High shot was tipped by the stick of Trenchak into the corner. Soviet fans applaud that save. Petro, long lead pass broken up by Smith. They try to feed it ahead for Harlamov. He gets it at the blue line. That's the shot go. Hard drive. Over top. It's on the mesh, and they finally stop the play. He's got a shot, Howie. He's also got a heart. The little fella has been targeted for us tonight. There's no doubt about it. Time and time again, he's had the Team Canada members finishing the check on him, and, and just come back and he's just playing terrific hockey it hasn't slowed him up one step it's just delightful to see a fellow play so well when he's being attacked as often as he has a 
Uh, here's that great shot. And now as we get back to the live action here, the Soviets at center ice losing it to Paul Schmier. Over on the left side, Anderson could not get around Sagenka. Into the corner goes number 21, Yuri Shatlow. Plays it around on the near boards for Bodanov. He could not clear. Kept in by Smith, who was zacked, and then he swung his stick around and tossed the Soviet player Shavit on the side of the face, and the official was way over in the corner and did not see it. Although it may have been very accidental on Smith's part, a reflex action as he was getting up from a hard check, swung his stick around and caught the Soviet player. This is the problem when you the official is as lax as he has been tonight. It's pretty tough what to call. Obviously, under normal conditions, the Russian charging would have got the penalty. Smith didn't hear the whistle blow, and he took what he thought was an unfair blow, and he come around and swung his stick. I just kind of think Team Canada's losing their cool a little bit. We've been the attackers most of the evening and have been giving it and receiving it as well. But when we're on the receiving end, we just can't continue to take stupid penalties. I think they've called a penalty to Shadrin on that. I will have to wait for clarification, but they've got the gate open of the penalty box. And Shadrin is going to get a two-minute penalty. So they saw what he did and chose to ignore what Rick Smith did in the way of retaliation. Who gets it now? Shadrin is heading across the ice, number 19. There's Here the it check. is. Here's Look at the that. check. Boarded him. Obviously Played charging from boarding. behind. He took a long time to blow the whistle. This is what made him think Smith's going to get the penalty. Okay, so Team Canada now is the manpower advantage. They've got the hull line with McKenzie and Lacroix on the ice. Markow and Paul Schmier, the lone defender. Canada trailing 2-1 to one here, reaching the... Six-minute mark of the third period in Moscow today. Bobby Hall at center ice across the Soviet line. Around the Gankov, right in front. Loose, and they couldn't get the shot on goal as Hall worked it in front. Mackenzie and McGuire couldn't make a play. Now Maltsev. He was uh, stopped by the speed of Paul Schmier, and Mark Howe has it. Howe leading it from Mackenzie up the right side. Jams it down against Luchenko. McGuire with Mackenzie, digging it back for Schmier. Here, had it blocked by Maltsev, but contains it there, maintains his balance, gets it to McKenzie. McKenzie out to Bobby Hall, winding up, blocked by Sagankov. Hall again in front of the goal, and hop past the claws stick. Cleared to the line, held in by McKenzie. Around behind that Soviet goal, all kinds of pressure now by Team Canada. Mark Howe, out to Paul Schmier, to Bobby Hall. Hall shooting, blocked by Petschak. The rebound is tipped out of danger. They have 40 seconds to go, and that Soviet penalty and back come the Canadians inside the line with Schmier. Works it down the boards, in behind. Luchenko chops at it, is on the mash and off again. Mark Howe, out for Bobby Howe, couldn't control the bouncing puck to get a shot away. All around the Soviet goal, but so far, a frustrating power play for Team Canada. Here's Schmier getting tied up now, center ice against Viculo. They play it across to the open side to Bobby Hull. Stepped inside the blue line against Sagankov. Being tied up by Sagankov. Now it's worked free and behind the goal. The Soviets recover, and up they come on the left side with only five seconds to go on the Russian penalty to Shadrin. Soviets have killed it off. They're checking well now in the center right area. Paul starts out of the pass with a big hand. Right behind it. He shoots. Great save. Rebound for Cody Howe. And he couldn't get his stick on it. Cody Howe with a great chance. Could not get his stick on the bouncing rebound. The Canadians do everything but score. And the Soviets are finally called for icing. The Soviets are making it very, very tough in front of their neck for our superstars. Just watch what they do to Gordy Howe here. And watch this fantastic save. Keep your eye in front of the net. Look at this from behind. Now watch it beat Gordy with the stick again as he's going down. It's been just a tremendously punishing hockey game in front of both nets. They'll need at least for 48 hours until the next game to recover. Shot down the ice off a Soviet stick. It is called again for icing against the USSR. We have 11 minutes and 58 seconds to play in the game. And the Soviets, on two goals by Alexander Maltsev, lead Canada on a goal by Gordy Howe, 2-1. In fact, they take the actual time down to the fraction of the second, as you see, 11.58 and a half remaining now. Canadians fail to hold it in. Stapleton digs back for it now inside his own zone. 
with Tremblay, Mahovlich, there's Bernier and Gordy Howe. They form up down the ice. Left side pass to Mahovlich, who's behind him. It's shot inside the line. It'll be called on the offside. This is what Team Canada has been doing most of the evening. The Russians are picking up the wings extremely well, and we're running ahead and running ahead, and we're forcing the puck carrier as staple and just just there to uh, Mahavlich to make the pass. The Russians intercept it. Vasiliev gets it over now to number two, Alexander Gusev. He fires it across on the right side. Back into the center again, broken up by Bernier. Bernier to Tremblay. Tremblay away from a high loft. To Bernier, Bernier shot, screened and it went wide. As Petjak made the move a little late on that, it slides all the way around the boards and down to the other end. No icing. Matt Stapleton tries to leave it for Bernier. Mihailov steals and takes it out in front. Bernier, oh, and it rolls as he was trying to cradle the puck into Cheever's arms. Then it rolled just wide, and finally Cheever's did come up with it. Wherever you are across the country, we sincerely hope that you're enjoying Game 5 of the Soviet-Canada Series along with us here, the 15,000 spectators at the Ziggy Ice Stadium in Moscow. Among them, close to 3,000 Canadian supporters. Now here's Rick Smith beside his own goal. The Canadians trailing by a goal near the midway mark of this period, less than a minute to go until they will change in the third period to the final 10 minutes. And there's an icing call. Back beside Cheevers will come the face off. As a matter of fact, these Canadian fans give Moscow the look of Grey Cup Week, Howie. In fact, I've seen Grey Cup Weeks that were quieter. Well, they certainly are livening things up here tonight. It's just a place to look over where the Canadian people are sitting and see all kinds of color. From the face-off, Schmier into the corner, works against the Soviet player Lebedev. He takes it out, and the shot goes wide. Round to the left point. Kept in by Chatelot for Bodenov to Lebedev, and he couldn't really end for Shadrin. They form up again now. Shadrin got taken down. Here's a hard shot blocked by Peter Bodenov in the rebound. He could not get the shot as he was turned around by Rick Smith. Smith reacting just in time to save a Soviet goal. Well, there's Lebedev who had an excellent chance to put it in. Now watch this. This is what happens under the threat of being hit. See, he gets rid of it pretty quick. He doesn't want to stay around that puck too long because he knows he's going to feel the uh, either the stick or another person's body. So this makes the goaltender's job a lot easier. We have 30 seconds until the 10-minute mark of the period and about five minutes left in the misconduct for Ralph Backstrom. I might put in here, too, that the Smith and Schmier have been playing extremely well. Yes, they have. In fact, the weak point of Team Canada was to be the defense, but in the games against the Soviets, you really cannot uh, say that that was a factor. They played exceedingly well. Here on this big ice surface, with some trouble in their own zone earlier, they seem to have acclimatized themselves very well the last couple of periods. Now here's Stapleton behind his goal, away from Bodenov, worked up. To the left side, Bodenov lost his balance, comes over on the right wing for Johnny McKenzie across the line, McKenzie closing in, fell heavily into the back board. He's all right, getting right off again. Play carries on with McQuaw for Bobby Hull. Can't get his stick on it in time. And number 21, Chantelow comes up with it. He's pursued by McKenzie as the puzzle sound to mark the halfway point of this third period. With the score, the Soviet 2 and Canada 1, this is Game 5 from Moscow. KTEL presents Jukebox Jive, 25 great hits of the Jukebox era by the original stars, the Bullmarks. Oh, clap your hands, clap your hands. Brad McFadder. Lover, please, please come back. Don't take the train coming down the track. Palenka. Oh, Here, Del Shannon, Bill Haley, Mitch Ryder, The Tokens, Frankie Lyman, Joey D. All the great hits from the jukebox era. Get Jukebox Jive, 25 original hits, $4.99 from KTEL. Tape for cassette, $6.99. This is Don Chevrier with Howie Meeker and Johnny Esau back at Luzniki Sports Stadium in Moscow as we get set to the final 10 minutes of the third period of this fifth Soviet-Canada game. The Russians ahead by a 2-1 to score. Bromley loops a soft shot that Trechak handles easily. Turns aside to Yuri Tierra. 
Mikulov on the board being checked by Bobby Hall. A hard pass drive high and was caught just in time by a somewhat startled Vatislav Trechak. Hall has scored so many goals in this series from about that point of the ice. The left side, the quick release that he has. He's got six goals overall. He leads in scoring so far. Here's Juan out behind the goal. Getting it out for Trombley, and he couldn't get a direct shot on goal. Up to Vikulov, outside the Soviet line. Forced back inside by Johnny McKenzie. He did some good checking there, McKenzie and McQuad. And work it down to the corner, where now Kieran has it again. He leads the pass up at center ice for Ann Easton. Over to Vikulov, across the line. Stopping in there to make his play. Now getting set, shooting, a nice shot wide. In front for both of them, a tremendous play. No one there to relay it for the USSR. Bobby Hull at center ice chasing it. Chopped down by Lacroix. Hull was trapped offside, and they'll face off. A little under nine minutes to play in the hockey game. And they'll make line changes. So with a lead coming out now. Line with Rejan Hull, Serge Bernier, and Frank Mahomet. I wish we could show you that last rush, uh, rush on the replay because J.C. Trombley comes through the middle. Instead of finishing the check, he plays the puck. And as a result, uh, the Russians had just a great uh, opportunity to... All right, now here's Selwood, across the Russian line, shooting it in behind the goal, and Trechak is there to block the pass. For Harlem off, trying to break, he now gets it to Petrov, offside, over two lines, as Petrov and Mihailov broke two on one inside the blue line. Reminder that the sixth game is coming up Thursday, morning or afternoon, depending on where you live across Canada. Check for the time in your area. And then the final two games of this series on Saturday and Sunday for Moscow. Ricky Lee for Serge Bernier. Brad Selwood now. Stopping to make a play to Bernier, and he almost set him up and rolled off his stick to the corner. Bernier for who could not get the pass out to him. The big M, Mahavlich in there. Works it down for Hool. Hool centering it behind Bernier, and now Mahailov breaks out. Soviets are out two on two. On the left side, breaking into the clear. Oh, and it's shot by Harlem off his wide. The rebound is score. And both teams kicking so well, this eventually had to happen. J.C. a moment ago had a great try at the other end. Now watch the rest of these men move up as he's been all night. Look at this guy make the move. Could have had the goal himself. Just a great play. It comes off the boards, and who picks it up? The Russian. He bends it and puts it in. Goal is scored by Gusev. The Russians lead it 3-1 now. That goal is coming at the 11.48 mark of this third period. 3-1 for the Soviets. Team Canada now is a big job ahead of it. To get back into this fifth game. Here's Levy there with the Canadian line. Wings around behind the goal against the ball, straight it out, and both now could not get the shot away. Rick Smith against Shadrin. Shadrin wins it. Smith goes down, waiting for the pass out, and it's picked up instead by Paul Henderson. Henderson with Tom Webster on the right. Cross the line, Webster trying to break in, went down. No call. It's slipped over the Soviet player, and the Soviets got it back to center ice on the stick of Levy there. Now Bodanov, stopping inside the blue line. Caught by Henderson. Buck goes to the board. The Gankov trapped it there. Henderson digs it out to Mike Walt. Walt trying to feed Webster. Rolls it across to Trechak, and he holds on. They have 7-11 to play. And the Soviets lead now 3-1 on Gusev's insurance goal at 11.48 of this third period. Soviets has a pet play when it's obvious that Team Canada has lost possession of the puck in their zone. And the Soviet defenseman goes into the corner to pick it up. Watch for that long pass right from the far corner to the Russians standing up here on the red line. They start away lightning fast. Just amazing. Gordy Howe trapping it, but not for long as the Soviets break quickly again. And Easton with Vicolo did not make the play. And now Frank Mahavlich will turn and come back for Team Canada's center right. Ross for Howe couldn't get it to him. 
J.C. Tremblay works it away for Piccolo across the blue line. Then he lost control. Here's a chance in front of the goal for Markow. And he's jumped his fourth over top. The Russians are checking extremely well on their own end. And I think the only way we're going to get a goal is for move our defense up as quick as we can. There's lots of open space, but they're picking up our forward oh, just so very, very well. Well, Boris Gallagher must be happy. He still doesn't show that he is with that 3-1 lead. Pat Stapleton over to Gordy Howe. Mark Howe and Frank Mahovlich in his offside. Six thirty-eight remaining in the hockey game. 3-1, the Soviet Union leads Team Canada. Stapleton. Tromley with Mahovlich and Markow inside the line for Mahovlich in front Frenchek blocks that Tromley carries on gets it to Howe Howe cannot make the centering pass out in front and Stapleton keeps it in at the blue line Soviet now gains control and Eason over on the left side for the Gangkov up the board to Maltev he could not control the puck and now Gordy Howe sweeps it forth beside his own goal to his son Mark off the board for Tromley Play ahead to Mark Howe, and back they come, three on two. Here's Howe inside the line, shooting it, and a glove save. The rebound is loose, in behind for Howe. Howe still with it, can't get it in front. Gordy Howe got taken down, no penalty called there by Sopecki. Howe was hooked in front of the goal. Back comes the Sylvia, across the line. Here's a decent stopping. Mahavlis breaks that up, and Howe just dumped Moltev going by. And then Moltev trips the Canadian player. Mark Howe, and they finally whistle played out. Both things were ignored, and now Mark Howe is going after Soviet player in front of the penalty box. But the referee ignores both those flagrant infractions of this end and one of the other end, and they have this game getting out of hand on him. Well, it's been threatening for a rough all night long, and he has to call some of those penalties, some of the time. Otherwise, uh, you're going to have what happened to Gordy Howe. Obviously, a penalty up in there, but he's been letting that, that type of thing go all night long. But Gordy then skated it right by him and just decked the Russian who was really looking the other way. Maltev, yeah. He gave him a dandy and Maltev was nowhere near the puck. Then when Maltev was lying on the ice, Mark Howe went by, he tripped him. Let's see here it is, right back. here. Coming down the wing. Just watch how well. There's a great save there. Look at the puck lay loose. And Frank Mahavich had been skating a little harder. He thought Trichik had the puck in his glove and stopped skating. When it popped loose, by the time he realized he'd be home free, by Trichik and put the rebound in the corner. Here's Howell, and a shot goes wide. McKenzie goes in after it, can't come up with a puck. Rick Smith on the board, down to Johnny McKenzie over his stick. Now Gustav gets away from the check for McKenzie. Hull to McKenzie, out in front for Lacroix. Bobby Hull now as he puts the pressure on. For Johnny McKenzie, McKenzie out in front again. No relay, Hull couldn't get his stick on it. Paul Schmier keeps it in, the Soviets now move it out to center right. We have five minutes and nine seconds to play in the game, and the USSR leads by a score of three to one. Vasiliev to Mahailov, into Petrov at center right. He couldn't make the play, the Mahailov, Mahailov back to the cross. Into the corner, Bobby Hull trying to slow the play down, can't win the puck. Back on the point for Vasiliev. Loose in front, Smith for Canada. He can't get it out. Here's the shot, and oh, she was a great save. As Mahailov was attacked from behind, six going high in front of that goal now. Oh, and Spear took down the Soviet player, number 13. Still no penalty. Real wood jumping out there, Howie, and they're not selling a thing. Here is Johnny McKenzie to Bobby Howe. Howe lost the puck behind him, was bumped by Vasiliev. Vasiliev and McKenzie against the boards. Vizchenko, they finally move it out with Petrov. Rough, tough hockey here in the third period in Moscow. Four minutes and ten seconds to play. Here's Lebedev now. To the Canadian line. Stopping in there as they're changing on the go. Out to Shadron, he can't get it. Over the foot and off, he shoots, and it's just off the glove of Jeeber's wide. Rick Smith behind the goal. Canada has the moments when they sag inside the blue line and get a rest of there as the puck goes into the crowd. But unbelievable use of the six out there. I just wouldn't believe it unless I actually saw it. I've never seen such rough, tough hockey, and, and nothing being called. Look at this. Just watch what's going on. 
It is unbelievable the sick work that's going on. And let me make it clear by both teams. Right. By both. It's hard to sit here and figure how an official can let this type of thing go. Well, it's, it's certainly not part of hockey. Hopefully, it's the last game in the series. Mr. Zepecki will work. Here's Trombley with a body check in the corner. Now, Stapleton now chasing it with 3.44 to play in the game. And the Canadians down by two. Now he's going to call a penalty against Bodenoff, who hooks the pass Stapleton. And believe me, it was the mildest contact we've seen in the last two minutes on this right surface. But there it is. The Soviets will be a man short. And that is only the, and he has them up here, the fourth Soviet penalty of the game. The only thing you have to go back to is that there's the hook right there, and certainly, as Don just said, that means that uh, unlimited stick swinging and spearing going on out there, and charging from behind, and he calls the chief hooking penalty. Yeah. You have to go back to Cheevers. He just played so very, very well all night long. But for his great play, uh, we'd have been out of the game a lot, lot sooner than we were. 339. You see the time remaining here. As uh, here in Moscow, it is just past 10 o'clock at night. The Canadians looking for a late rally now with a power play to get back into this game. Pat Stapleton to center right. Feeds it ahead for Webster, breaking in. Oh, and he couldn't get the shot away. The puck wouldn't lie down as he hears that jack. Webster has scored some outstanding goals just like that in this series. Now, back at the Soviet blue line as they try to slow it down. They'll play it down the ice. Peters stopping it for Pat Stapleton. Minutes, 25 seconds to go on the Soviet penalty. Stapleton across to Mike Walt inside the blue line. Walt back for Stapleton off the board. Let's it go. Loose in front. Webster makes a move and then can't get the shot away. He was tied up by Sagankov and down he goes. The Soviets clear at the length of the ice. One minute, five seconds now. Kolaka looking concerned as the Canadian power play forms up again at center ice. Here's Webster across the blue line shooting. Good save. Rebound. Trecek flies the way out to hang on. A 2.38 to play. It's a good save here by Trek but look at this great move by Walt. Going for the puck, and instead of going into the Russian goaltender, certainly got up over top. Just a great maneuver. From the faceoff, Gordy Howe getting it back for Schmier. His shot is deflected. Howe swings at it. And it was just on the short side. Stopped by Trent Jack. Backstrom is back on the ice now from that long rest from the misconduct penalty. To Mark Howe. Out to Schmier. Schmier can't control it. Has time to make a play and does to Mark Howe. Howe. Cross. Bumps off a Soviet player and comes back to center ice. 30 seconds to go in the Soviet penalty now. Canada trailing 3-1. to one, with Just over two minutes of playing time remaining. Reached the 58th minute mark of the hockey game. Here is Markov. Across the Soviet line. Lost control of it. Gets a shot. He scores! Markov makes it 3 to 2 with a minute and 50 seconds left. Here it is. See the Russian there. Hooks him from behind. He lost control of the puck. Now watch here as he cuts across the blue line and holds open all the time on this here left wing. Now watch the Russian. Give him the big hook. Pull him off the puck. The kid right for it. Gets it back on his stick and lets it go. No doubt about it. Had to be screened all the way. Hey, we're back in the ball game. Scoring for Team Canada was Mark Howe, number 11. Assist Paul Schmier, number 18. Schmier gets the assist on it. The time is going to be 18-10. And Team Canada is a goal away here in Moscow. And the Canadian fans begin to chant, Go Team Go. They're centered mainly in the end zone, directly behind the Soviet goaltender, Trebjak. There it is, Mark Howe, the second goal for Canada. Now for the faceoff, Rejan Hool did not control a high puck at the Soviet blue line. Bernier coming up with it now, dropping it back to Pat Stapleton. Soviets with that goal are at full strength, and it is whistled down for a face-off at the 
Canadian line being passed off over two lines. 137 left in the game. 3-2 for the USSR. Billy Harris will be uh, making his changes carefully here and uh, going with his hot hand, changing frequently, no doubt, on the remaining time he has. Bobby Hull, the leading goal scorer in the series, undoubtedly will see for nice time before the remaining minute and 37 seconds run out. Remember, game six coming up on Thursday. Check for the time of the telecast in your area. Canadians take lots of time. The officials allowing them to before getting play underway again. Bernier slowly slides up now and wins the face off. Gets it out to center right. The Hobbit goes digging after it. Lost out to the Siliev. Siliev and Maltsev and it's deflected into the corner. Maltsev centering it out. The Hobbit is left it there. And oh, Jeter's out of the last moment. Just got a piece of it off Wichelo. Poole can't clear. The Soviets have pressure now. And here's Wichelo across the front for Shadrin. Back to Wichelo. Being watched by Swampley. Turned around in front of Shadrin. He shoots. And the save made by Jerry Cheevers with 111 left in the game. There again is the reason Cheevers, the Canadian team, is even in this game. Now watch him read the situation here. He knows that the Russians can only shoot the puck. There's Canadians on either side of him. So he comes out as the Russians gaining control. As a result, the puck hits him. Really didn't have any room to go in unless you run it in off the post. Race to the Soviet lead. Rick Smith now works it up to the left board to center ice. Spear going after it. Leads it for Bobby Hull. He's on the ice now with Mackenzie and McQuaw. But here's Piccolo coming back against Rick Smith. Shooting it. Saved by Jerry Cheever. Another outstanding save. 55 seconds left now as Bobby Hull winds down the left wing against the Gankov. It's reflected off the boards into the corner. McQuaw taken down by Shedrin. Now Maltzev. Pass Hull gets it across the left side for Lushenko and back to Maltsev. Maltsev trying to kill some time. 35 seconds left now. Soviets go into a defensive shell to try to kill off the remaining time. And back to two games off in their own zone. They shoot it back to center right for Maltsev. He sees it off alone against Smith. Going in on goal. He was dropped by Smith. There's no penalty on the play. He slashed it going in and it wasn't called. He's got 15 seconds left now. The play at center right. Sheevers is out of the goal. He's got six attackers out there. Only eight seconds left, though. It's behind the goal for Paul Speer. Got to get it up there in a hurry. On the right side, sailing down the ice. Just two seconds, one second, and he's all over. The Soviet Union holds on to post a three victory over Team Canada 1974. In a rough and a time vicious hockey game right here at Mount Jordan Maltsev put the Soviets ahead in the opening period. Then Gordie Howe sidled up in the second before Maltsev's second goal. Set the Russians out of period two ahead, two to one. Gustav made it 3-1 at 11.48 of the third period. And then Mark Howe from here at 18.10 of this period gave the Canadians a final chance of tying it up. They were never close after Mark Howe's goal. They're shaking hands now. And I'm sure they'll be feeling bruises and cuts as they uh, get the gear down and await the Six games coming up on Thursday night, right here in the Mickey Eye Stadium in Moscow. With the final score, the Soviet three and Team Canada, this is Game Five from Moscow. That's something very special for Canadian hockey fans in the WHA. The Quebec Nordiques, Toronto Toros, my own Winnipeg Jets, the Edmonton Oilers, and the Vancouver Blazers are all in one new division, the Canadian Division. That means we'll play more games in Canada against our Canadian competition. Add that kind of fan interest to what you'll see from the rest of the WHA, where high round draft picks and prized European and North American additions have made all teams stronger, and you'll know why season tickets are really moving. There are still some good season tickets available, but you'll have to act quickly if you want to be part of a great league, not only this year, but for years to come. Call the team ticket office in your area right now. There'll be someone there to answer your questions and deal with your requests. Join the WHA. You'll have a lot of fun. See exciting hockey, and you'll find it's something the entire family can get involved in. I mean, we've already proven that, haven't we, people? All right, there, Bob. Here he comes. 
Don Chevrier with Howie Meeker and Johnny Esau here as the crowd files out, having witnessed a real rough one tonight, Howie. There's no question about that. I think the Soviets did just an excellent job of containing some of our big superstars, Bobby Hall, Frank Mahavich, and Paul Henderson. These are the fellas that are going to have to get us gold if we're going to get any at all or if we're going to win some hockey games. And tonight they were just dominated by the great checking of that Russian hockey team. All right, Howie, and uh, now we're getting set to go down to Johnny Esau with Jerry Cheevers. Thank you, Don. I do have Jerry Cheevers with me, and it must be a very tired Jerry Cheevers. I don't know if you ever had to play a tougher game than that. Uh, Jerry had to hold him in there for so long, so early, but uh, it was just a sensational night for you and the club, and yet still missed by only one. Well, you know, we've been out for seven days, and, uh, you know, the time adjustment and all that, that's a factor, definitely. But we come back a little stronger in the third period. Uh, I think this is probably the toughest game in the series for myself, definitely. Uh, they're an excellent hockey team, and, and I think we're a little uh, stale, and if we can be that close being stale, then, you know, it's going to be a super series. So. Yeah, I think, I think the word stale is a good choice or a good description there because it seems that so many times when they're getting those uh, three-man breaks, that there's either one or two going offside, which is generally a, a sign that you've missed something in seven days. Yeah, it's, it's timing and concentration, all that junk. You know, we've, uh, we've been traveling around, and, uh, you know, I don't think those... Uh, the games against the Finns and Swedes were really, you know, that, uh, uh, you know, they weren't that good of hockey teams to really make us, uh, you know, get down for this series. But uh, I think tonight's game certainly did, you know. Jerry, you've had a groin injury, and I noticed in that first period you, you had to reach that top corner three times or four times, which is usually when you hurt that groin. Did it bother you tonight? Not really. I mean, I, you don't think about it out there. It's, it's a little sore, and I know it's going to be sore tomorrow. But the, a groin is uh, something you have to play with, that's all. I mean, uh, as long as I got assurance that it won't get worse, then I, I'm going to stick in there and play. Uh, it, it's just some part of the game. You know, you had the four games at home, uh, but did you feel a different attitude amongst the players as you came into this ring for the first time? No, the guys were, you know, the guys were as up as much as we were anywhere. This, we knew how important this game was. We have to uh, win no less than uh, two games in the next three, and uh, it's going to be tough, but, uh, you know, they did it in 72, and we certainly have a chance here in 74. Gary, I want to offer congratulations to you. It was one of the outstanding performances of the series, and there have been so many, but yours is particularly outstanding tonight, and we congratulate you on behalf of all the sport fans watching all across Canada, of course, the millions here in uh, in uh, the Soviet Union, and those, of course, in the United States who are where you're playing. Thanks, John. Thanks very much. Jerry Cheevers, who has been the Canadian outstanding player, and now thank you, Jerry. Good luck, Johnny. Now let's go back upstairs to Don Chevrier. Okay, the Soviet outstanding player of the game was Alexander Maltsev, who got two of their three goals. And, of course, unquestionably, Jerry Cheevers was the outstanding star for Team Canada in this 3-2 loss to the Soviet team tonight. Well, that's the story from Moscow, then. This is Don Chevrier, on behalf of Howie Meeker and Johnny Esau, saying good night from Luzhniki Stadium in Moscow. Soviet series coming to you live from Moscow.